Hello and welcome back. This time we're going to talk about hardly flammable hydraulic fluids. We said the hydraulic fluid is usually some oil huh? because this fits our wishing list best. Yeah? However, however, if we do have a hot environment, you know, and a forge, die casting, rolling mills, ironworks in general. Uh, control systems for some steam turbines, uh, coal mining, stuff like this. We're really heavy industry and really uh, a lot of heat and so on is around. Then we should not use oil. Huh? Because we said if we, this is heavy industry, a pinch, a little pinch in a hose and suddenly tss, a oil nebula is appearing. There's a glowing part. Boom. Uh, should not happen. So there we need hydraulic fluids which are non-flammable or hardly flammable. Yeah? We said there are different different types of control fluids. Yeah? They usually marked with HF. Yeah? So these hardly flammable things they are marked with HF. Yeah? And we said there is HFA yeah? which is basically uh, water and oil. There is HFB, what is also water and oil. However, here is the, the mixture is a little bit different. Then there is HFC, yeah, which are water-based solutions. And there is HFT, yeah, which are uh, waterless solutions, yeah. oil and water less solutions. So these hydraulic fluids, they are used. Now, why aren't we using them all the time, right? I mean, what is the disadvantage of those things? Or Let's compare those things with our standard hydraulic oil. So one, one topic is they have higher density. Usually they have a higher density. Yeah. Higher density. There is no upside for this. Yeah. There is a downside and the downside is that the suction of the pump and so on, it's, it's harder. It's harder for the pump simply. Yeah. Harder for the pump. So the suction line and so on, simply to accelerate, deaccelerate the oil, I need more energy to do this. Okay. It's not that easy to, he to lift something heavy than to lift something more light, right? Then there is something which is actually not, sounds not that bad, yeah? So we have lower compressibility. Compressibility. Lower compressibility. So this means I cannot compress this oil. I can compress oil better than I compress those fluids. Huh? The big advantage is it's not that elastic. Huh? So this is the advantage. Not that elastic, yeah? If I switch, if I push it, it's the pressure is there. Okay? Not elastic. Disadvantage. Higher pressure peaks. Yeah? And also the propagation. If it's not, if it's not the damping, yeah, a pressure peak can travel further through the liquid. Yeah? So there are higher pressure peaks to be expected inside there. Yeah? Then one one big topic is the air separation. The disadvantage is. The air separation is worse. Okay. 
there is also no upside for this. And what is the disadvantage? I mean, if the F separation is worse, how sh why should I care? Yeah? However, the time inside the tank, the hydraulic tank, yeah? so the reservoir, the hydraulic reservoir, fluid reservoir, it needs to be longer. Yeah? So that the air which might be in there yeah? have time to leave. Yeah? So the time in the tank. Is longer. If the time in the tank needs to be longer, yeah, then I need a bigger tank, a bigger reservoir, that this oil, this fluid, I always call it oil, this fluid stays inside there longer. Yeah. I don't reuse the fluid a certain amount of time. Yeah. Then, because especially in those things yeah, where water is involved, yeah, I have the the, the problem that the water is evaporating yeah? and the water evaporation is higher the higher the temperature is so i have limited working operating temperature working temperature limited operating temperature especially for a b and c so where water is inside yeah? because If it above 50 degrees Celsius, yeah, water evaporate is high, too high. Water is always evaporating. Yeah? But however, if we are above 50 degree, it's really evaporating. Yeah? It's really fast evaporating. So the water content is dropping inside there and then here I end up with standard oil yeah? here I end up with some other stuff yeah not that liquid anymore yeah then there is a different viscosity temperature behavior yeah? viscosity temperature behavior and there, there are different things. Eh? HFC is better. So these water-based solutions, they are usually better from viscosity temperature behavior. Eh? HFC. However, HFD are worse. Eh? They usually tend to change more the viscosity because of the temperature. Eh? The water less water and oil less solutions eh? the water and oil uh, solutions i mean they're pretty much like oil yeah. then big topic corrosion and this is also mainly the hfd topic yeah hfd yeah aggressive to Nitrite rubber, yeah. Nitrite rubber. You know the nitrite rubber probably under a, a trade name like uh, Perbuan, Puna, N, or something like this. Nitrite rubber, usually for ceilings, yeah? hoses, bladders inside of pressure accumulators, and so on. HFT is very aggressive and is 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 dissolving this. The tree rubber. Right? So you have to think about different sealing materials. Huh? Then my possibilities are narrowed down. Yeah? Corrosion. And last but not least, the price. The good thing is HFD fluids. Yeah? HFD are usually comparable to oil. Yeah? With proper heating and cooling. That we do can compensate this viscosity temperature behavior. Yeah? If we properly 
heat and cool them. Yeah? HFT is just like oil. Yeah? And if we are taking care about the correct sealing material and so on. Yeah? However, HFT is more expensive. Actually, this is the reason why we are not using hard flammable, hardly flammable fla liquids. Yeah? It's always the price. Yeah? It's the economy. <laughs> These things we usually can deal with technically. Here, where money is involved, this is usually the thing where it says, aha, uh -huh, okay, not then, then not. Okay, so now you have your reason why we are not using this all the time. That's about hydraulic fluids. Yeah? So standard fluid is oil. If there are special needs, then hardly flammable things. Yeah? Next time we're going to talk about how a hydraulic system is built up, physically built up. Yeah? So we're talking about that there's an energy supply part, there's an energy control part, there's a working part, there's a control part. What are behind those parts and how they work together, we will discover during the next videos. Next video will be about the basic, how those things are working together or what is the meaning energy yeah? energy energy producing part yeah or working part yeah? we'll discover this in the next video for this time thank you very much for listening and goodbye